Uh, this is uh, talking about ascent and descent physiology. What happens to air spaces as we descend or ascend. Most of what we have to acclimate to in diving is pressure. Expressed as pounds per square inch, PSI. Right now at sea level, we have pressure exerted on all objects here at sea level caused by about 10 miles of air stacked on top of each other. All these molecules weigh something. At the bottom, we've already figured out that it weighs 14.7 pounds per square inch. That's the weight on any objects here at sea level. Since this is caused by our Earth's atmosphere, we refer to this also as one atmosphere of pressure. Sometimes you see it as one bar. They all mean the same thing. One atmosphere is 14.7, 14.7 is one atmosphere. So what this means is that here is sea level. And the higher up you go, the less pressure is. There is. The most is right here at sea level. Yeah. Up here, five miles up, it may only be 10 pounds per square inch. But every object here at sea level is going to have 14.7 pounds of pressure on it. So if we measure out square inches, for example, on this table, each square inch has 14.7 pounds of weight on it. And all the square inches on this table is, what, probably 300 or so square inches. In each one of those, 14.7. So the total pressure on this table right now is probably about 5 tons. Top of my head is about 500 pounds. We don't notice it because it is equally applied pressure. There's as much air pressure underneath that table pushing back up as there is pushing down. Same thing with my body. There's much pressure on the bottom pushing back up, so the pressure cancels out itself out. All the forces cancel out. Solids and liquids, the molecules are essentially all touching. Of course, in the solids, the molecules are locked together, so we can't get our hands through it. But liquids, the molecules slide on these other, so we can move our hands through the liquid. So if we start increasing the pressure around these objects, either solids or liquids, nothing really happens. For example, let's take a balloon and fill it up with a liquid water. Imagine all these molecules are touching. If I applied unequal pressure, just top and bottom, I'm going to crush that balloon. I'm going to squash it. But if I apply equal pressure all the way around it, if I start increasing the pressure, Nothing happens. This force is pushing against the skin of the balloon. That's transferring the force to this molecule. That's transferring it to this molecule. Same thing's happening from the opposite side. When they meet in the center, they cancel themselves out. So if we apply increase the pressure on a liquid or solid, nothing happens. Or as another analogy, a swinging door. I weigh 180 pounds, someone else weighs 180 pounds. We both lean on each side of the door. We aren't going anywhere. We're canceling each other out. Okay. Now, let's say I take this balloon situation and do it a little bit differently. This time, let's say I fill it up with air. Air has a lot of space between the molecules. I can't feel the air molecules right now. There's a lot of space between them. Unless I'm going real fast in the car, stick my hand out, then I can feel. But if I apply equal pressure to this balloon now, that's filled with a gas, air, equal pressure all the way around, start increasing, 
what happens is this force pushes the skin of the balloon in. This force over here is pushing the skin of the balloon in. This one and this one. As I increase the pressure, it keeps making the balloon get smaller. I'm pushing the molecules of air towards the center. Now the air is going to get more dense as I get towards the center, but now I'm making that balloon small. I'm compressing that balloon. So any air spaces are going to get compressed if we increase the pressure, get smaller. If we decrease the pressure, they're going to get bigger again. So how does this apply to us in diving? Well, we've got some air spaces associated with us. We've got a couple sinuses up here, we've got a couple here, we've got a couple here. Our middle ear is an airspace. Our lungs are air spaces. Our mass when we got it on is an airspace. All these air spaces, as we increase the pressure around them, they're going to get smaller. And diving is what we call squeeze. Nice descriptive term. Sinus squeeze, ear squeeze, lung squeeze mass squeeze. If we get sinus squeeze, we get blood and fluids forced into our sinuses. So after a dive, we may have some blood coming out of our nose or we're spitting it up. Our middle ear, I think most of you know what happens there. As the pressure increases, we start feeling extreme pain on our ears, in our ears. Eventually, What's happening is the eardrums are getting pushed in, so eventually they will rupture. Our lungs, if they get compressed too much, they collapse. And even if we re reduce the pressure, they won't open again. Collapse lung, lung squeeze. The mask, when we got it on, our eyes are pushed into that mask. So we can end up with bloodshot eyes or black and blue eyes. Fortunately, those, all those air spaces are connected by tubes to our lungs. So if that pressure change is not too rapid, those air spaces are going to equalize automatically. Every day we have, not every day, but every now and then we have a pressure front moving. You've heard of high pressure fronts, low pressure fronts. They're coming slow enough though, as that pressure builds up, it flows into our lungs, the extra molecules, and then from our lungs they flow up through these tubes into all these air spaces, automatically equalizing them. We were actually designed for walking as humans. Not for, maybe running, but not for driving, flying, or diving. I don't know if any of you have ever been up on a mountaintop and you walk down, you don't notice a thing. But if you're driving down that mountain, you notice some pressure changes in your head. Definitely you're going to notice them when flying, and definitely you're going to notice them when diving, because water weighs a lot more than air. In fact, it only takes 33 feet of water to weigh the same as 10 miles of air. So if we go down 33 feet underwater, we're picking up another 14.7 for a total of 29.4, or two atmospheres total. One water, one air. 66 feet, three atmospheres total. Two waters, one air. 99 feet, four atmospheres total. Three water, one air. So, Going down just five feet underwater is equivalent to coming down from 20,000 feet in a non-pressurized plane in three seconds. So the pressure change is much more rapid in the water than it is on land. So therefore, we have to be more concerned with how to equalize these air spaces, because if we can equalize these air spaces, all this will not happen. As I was saying, the pressure change is very rapid going underwater because water weighs a lot more than air. In fact, one cubic feet of air weighs just a few ounces. 
but one cubic feet of seawater weighs 64 pounds. One cubic feet of fresh water is 62.5. So that pressure change is very rapid in the water. Therefore, we have to find out some techniques that we can use to get these air spaces to equalize faster than under natural conditions. Now for our ears and sinuses, the best method we used to tell people was to pinch your nose and blow air in your nose. That was effective on planes and driving down a mountain top and sometimes in diving, but in diving though we have a slight problem. We have to be able to do it with our mouth open because when we're scuba diving or snorkeling we've got a regulator or a snorkel in our mouth so our mouth is open. So we have to be able to do it with our mouth open. Now this is probably the biggest problem in diving is ear equalization. We have more trouble with students learning how to equalize than anything else. The trick of doing it with your mouth open is, again, pinch your nose the same as before, but with your mouth open, swallow. When you're swallowing, you're pushing the, your tongue up against the roof of your mouth. That immediately equalizes the ears and the sinuses. Sometimes people can equalize just by swallowing and yawning, which is good, but it's not very effective for most people. Also, swallowing and yawning does nothing for the sinuses, and we have to be able to equalize our sinuses also. Normally, you won't feel any pain in the sinuses from squeeze, sinus squeeze, unless they're already infected. Okay, but if you keep letting them get squeezed, eventually they may get infected. So, now the next question is, when do we equalize? When we feel pain? No. This is the second problem we have in diving, is people wait too long. And if you wait too long, the eustachian tube, which is flat in most people, gets pushed down even tighter, so it's almost impossible to do. So you may get down if you wait too long, you just can't do it. So what you have to do is go back up and start over again. Now the rule is, we should equalize in the first 33 feet, every three feet of descent. Go down three feet, pinch and swallow. Go down another three feet, pinch and swallow. Now you don't take a tape measure with you underwater to tell three feet, you just sort of guess. For example, the swimming pool that we used to, uh, is six feet, so you would have to do it twice before you get to the bottom. Now you may not feel any pain, but the ear gun can get stretched, and then for the next week or so you may feel funny noises going on. So we have to get in the habit of doing it every three feet of descent in the first 33 feet. Now why did I say the first 33 feet? Well, there's a law in physics called Boyle's Law that says simply the volume change of an airspace is the inverse of the pressure change. Inverse means upside down. Let's say I fill both my lungs up here at sea level and I'm free diving, snorkeling. Take a deep breath. I'm going to have a total of 10 pints of air in both of them. In volume, I measure them. If I swim down to 33 feet, the pressure down there is two times greater than what it is at sea level. Two atmospheres, one, two. So it's two times greater. So the volume change is going to be the inverse of the pressure change. The inverse of two is one half. So down there, if we measure our lungs, they're only going to be five pints in size. Same number of molecules, except the molecules are closer together. 66 feet, three times the pressure. It's going to be one third the volume. One third of ten is three and a third. Ninety-nine feet, four times the pressure, one fourth of ten is two and a half. If you notice, we lose the greatest volume going from here to here. We lose five pints of volume. 
from here to here only about one and two thirds, from here to here a fraction. Reverse, coming up, our air spaces will expand a little bit from here to here, a little bit from here to here, from here to here, 200 percent. Right here is our big problem area in diving. So we have to equalize our ears and sinuses probably ten times from here to here. Maybe only twice from here to here. From here to here only once. But contrary to popular belief, right here is where all our problems occur in snorkeling or diving or scuba diving. Now, we can go down as fast as we want as long as we can equalize our ears and sinuses. How about our mask? I mentioned earlier about mask squeeze. Our eyes are getting pushed in there. Well, generally, that's all taken care of because our nose is inside that mask. And as that pressure builds up, the air is going to come out of our nose automatically into that mask and equalize it. However, if you got the straps too tight, or sometimes just your characteristics. For example, I got a big nose and there's a nose pocket there that sometimes can get sealed off so the air can't get from the nose pocket up in the eye socket. So if you're descending at any time and you feel any discomfort in your eyes, what you should do is blow real hard through your nose into the mask. That will force some air up into those, those eye sockets to equalize them. If that don't work, go back up, loosen the straps up in your mask and then go back down. So, now we can go down as fast as we want as long as we can equalize our ears and sinuses and mask. And one thing we should be careful of is when we are descending and we pinch our nose to equalize our ears, we should take our fingers away from our nose afterwards because that's how our mask is equalized. And you keep your fingers on your nose all the while you're descending your mask is not going to get equalized and you can end up getting mask squeeze. Okay, we go down as fast as we want, as long as we can equalize our ears and sinuses and mask. However, snorkeling we can't go as deep as we want because our lungs are getting compressed. Theoretically, our lungs should collapse at around 100 feet. They don't because we've got ribs that help hold us open. But generally we don't have to worry about lung squeeze when we're free diving because most people can't get down to 99 feet. We're lucky to do 10, 15 feet on a free dive. But we could solve that problem of lung squeeze if I take another 10 pints of air up here and send it down here, it's going to become 5. Another one down there is five. So add it to the original one, it's going to be ten. And that's essentially what happens with commercial divers. They got a compressor up here, they got a hose, they're sending air down to the diver to equalize the diver's lungs. We do the same thing with scuba equipment. The only difference is we compress air into our tank that we carry on our backs and on our regulator hose delivers the extra air to our lungs to equalize them. That's why a tank it may last you two hours up here. Down here is only going to last you one hour. Because it's taken twice as much air to put in our lungs to equalize them. By the way, SCUBA is not a word. It's an abbreviation. It stands for Self-Contained Underwater Breathing Apparatus. So now on compressed air, we can go down as fast as we want, as long as we can equalize our ears and sinuses, and we can go as deep as we want as long as we're breathing. So we got everything so. Except now, now on compressed air, coming back up, all these air spaces, and we work so hard to equalize to get extra air molecules in there to equalize them to the outside pressure. Now coming up, these air spaces are going to overinflate what we call reverse squeeze. These air spaces over inflate, we get tissue damage and possibly air bubbles into our arterial blood. 
embolisms. So on ascent, we want to avoid all these air spaces from overinflating. So ascending maybe is more important than descending. Whenever we come up, we want to make sure we come up slow. 30 feet per minute should be our ascent rate. Now, how do you know 30 feet per minute? Well, our computers we use nowadays tell us if we're coming up too fast. Before our computers, though, we would tell people to look up, because by looking up, not only can you see where you're going, but you can watch your little tiny bubbles. They are traveling at 60 feet per minute. So we want to go slower than our little tiny bubbles. So we look up. And we want to keep our airway open. A lot of books and instructors will tell you number one rule in diving is never hold your breath. Well, that's important. When you are not inhaling, you should be exhaling. Even if you have the regulator out of your mouth, you should be exhaling. Never hold your breath. But if you're coming up too fast, the biggest mouth in the world isn't going to let that air come out. So they're equally important. You've got to come up slow and keep your airway open. Also, we want to have our BC hose in our hand and it's up. BC is our buoyancy compensator. One of its uses is if we're too heavy underwater, we put air in our BC. We can get completely neutral buoyant, completely weightless, just like the astronauts in space. You can just hang in the water. But let's say we had put some air in our BC down here. We were a little bit heavy. We start swimming up. As we come up now, that air pocket is going to start expanding. When it expands, it gives us buoyancy, making us go faster. So if we don't have that hose in our hand with a deflate button up, ready to let air out, if we're coming up and all of a sudden that air expands very, very fast, all of a sudden we're going too fast. By the time you find that hose and get it up, it may be too late. So we should start every ascent with our BC holes in our hand and it's up, ready to let air out. Okay. Now we're going to learn later on that actually we also have to have the holes up when we're going down because that's how we let the air out. Okay. Once you get on the bottom you can let go and just swim along as you want. We have a uh, system on that BC where you can put air in either orally or with the automatic inflator. The automatic inflator works off the regulator. But these automatic inflators are very, very dangerous, especially with the ascent. Because if you push that button too hard down here, it's going to fill your BC up and it's just going to shoot you to the surface. Sometimes you push that button down and it sticks. Also, there isn't a one made, every, any brand, whatever price, they all leak air at some time or stick. So you can be swimming along, all of a sudden you're being pulled to the surface. If that happens, what you want to do is get that BC holes up, depress the deflate button so the air is going out in the water, not into it, and then reach over with your other hand and unhook that hose and then go back to oral operation of the BC.